It's festive greetings to you all here on Game Week 10 as UCS take on Uxbridge in the Hertfordshire and Middlesex County's third division. It's going to be a game that will be contested with 12 players aside due to the visitors unable to raise a full complement of 15 players. David Cohen and Alex Thompson will start at props for UCS with Fraser Warren in the hooking position. Mert Zabke and Konstantinos Gerontakis will lock the scrum with Johnny Harper as the number eight. It will be Jasper McNally-Drew who will start in the scrum half position alongside Oliver Boss at fly half. Harrison Rudd and Gabriel Hartwell will play in the centre positions with Matthew Bradshaw on the wing and Conrad Paliowski at full back in a very exciting and pacey back line. There's plenty of grunt on the bench with three props available to use at any time for Will Jones' UCS. Trevor Turton, Jack Williams and Paul Dillon all able to play in the front row. Asher Glynn is the scrum half as well as Harry Greenall who will add some pace on the wing. Let's hope that 12 aside proves to be a good look over for UCS who are seven games unbeaten and looking to go top of the table. Well, this is where the festive goodwill begins and ends with the kickoff to this afternoon's game. Certainly uh, first in quite a long time as UCS and Uxbridge will play 12 players aside. It's uh, certainly one that will be a big test for Uxbridge as inform UCS already looking to put pressure on that line. They're on a three-game losing streak, are the visitors, which is the polar opposite to UCS, who are seven games without defeat. Uh, looking at the top of the table. Currently lying in third, but plenty of opportunity to potentially go further, and they might have the first try of the game here, and they do. It's not taken very long at all, and it's Jasper McNally Drew with a wonderful solo run. Takes the ball out of the ruck. Lovely little dummy in the defence there, just melting away. And it may be a sign of things to come for the visitors this afternoon. The first try scored by the UCS scrum half. As the ball now moves. to the opposite side from the line out again UCS with a wonderful record as of late the game will be reduced to 30 minutes in each half as a result of the visitors unable to raise the full complement it should mean a lot more space out there it's going to be a little bit of a mixture of a I guess the, the regular rugby union that we're used to watching and maybe a little bit of sevens with the extra room that's available out on the pitch. It should be a good watch. UCS in gold jerseys this afternoon and gold is very much what they are aiming for in the third division. Again, currently in third, but only six points off the top spot and they are looking at potentially getting over the line again here although it will be Uxbridge that will receive a penalty here as the short little dropout will see Uxbridge unable to gain possession and there will be a big run up the middle here that's a great run stunning run which will set position up nicely here for UCS big victors of course last week 44 points to 10 over Finsbury Park as Oxbridge look to throw the ball about themselves the visitors who very much struggle this season finished 10th last campaign as the ball will make a move through the hands as 
A chance over on this near side. It's good ball movement, although it will end in touch, unfortunately. For UCS, the scrum will be fed. And out it comes. Nice use of the forward pack as Jaron Takis has started the game positively. And there may be another try here. There is Gabriel Hartwell with the second score. I guess the only surprise really is that it's taken nearly 20 minutes to come. Jaron Takis again with a lovely play. And Ollie Boss is pass wide. And the lovely footwork from Hartwell. Again, the defence just melting away from the visitors. It's a second score for UCS. Back underway. It's a horrible bouncing ball, but it may lead to a break here. And this is a wonderful run. What a great run this is. Straight up the middle of the field, looking for some support. I think that was Mert Zabke who was racing down the middle and UCS are very much in the mood having scored that second try McNally Drew's feed and again looking for the quick rock as up the middle they go can they get to the line here and the try given Jasper McNally Drew gets a second score well, again, it was all about the return from this kickoff. Huge drive from Mert Zabke, which really set the position up. And again, it's the set which really proves crucial here. You can see setting up the position was Johnny Harper, the number eight. And he gave it on to Jasper McNally-Drew to get try number two. And UCS starting to stretch their legs here. Looks as though he's been injured though. Jasper McNally-Drew in scoring his second try. Being replaced by Asher Glint as Uxbridge. Maybe looking to score themselves Well. Again, with a shortened game time. Already trailing by 17 points to nil. They really need some kind of a score to keep them in the game at this point. They're going to go wide and they might have some numbers here. Can they nip in at the corner? And they might just do. They have done. Well, right on the cusp of half time, they've managed to get themselves some spare numbers on the blind side they've left Paliowski incredibly exposed and that last little pass resulting in a diving score and that might just give Uxbridge some hope kick looks as though it's sliced it's nowhere near and that will bring about half time again a strange 30 minute half but it's one which has a similar story to the last seven games. UCS leading 17 points to five. Ed Moores, the referee, gets the game back underway. And what will that try right on half-time do for Uxbridge? Well, not an awful lot at the beginning of the second half, as already UCS looking to... Make way up this near flank. It's another good throw by Fraser Warren in the front row. And again, the ball pass wide and Paliowski in the line. Ball out wide. Are they going to be able to get in here? They're very close as once again the position nicely set. The driving run into the middle. Again, looking for options wide. It's going to come here for Zabke, but the play will be brought back for the penalty. Asher Glynn out wide, and again, it's the chance on the blind side, and it should be a try for Boss. And Ollie Boss gets in on the act. Again, they've used the 
Set piece to their advantage. Lovely little pass from Glynn that gives Boss the opportunity on the outside. Fourth try up for UCS. You can see just how windy conditions are out there today. But this certainly had a much better effort than the Uxbridge one at the end of the first half. But it still has the same result. Again, a bit of a scrappy rook area with Johnny Harper looking to get up. Luxbridge should have taken heart from the score they got at the end of the first 30 minute period here at University College School playing fields. This UCS side that are in incredible form, although there is a drop ball here and there might be a chance to hack on and maybe get another one here. They're looking for their second try here, Uxbridge, and they've used that to their advantage. They're in good position here. Can they get themselves another score? And they might just do. They're out of a couple and they will do. Well, that is a response from Uxbridge. Well, you keep expecting that this visiting side may just fold at some point. Lack of numbers to make up a full strength side, yet the 12 players that are representing them are doing them very proud indeed. A second try, which puts the game back in the melting pot again. 22 points to 12. In a game that, again, you would have thought that UCS would have run away with, but it's such an anomaly, isn't it? 12 players on each team really does open the, the game up as an attacking prospect, and it also takes away any, I guess, kind of forward advantage Scrum would have had as well. Clearly can't have scrums with a full complement of players in so again Uxbridge making the most of that and throwing the ball around tackle looks slightly high but the referees wave play on again Uxbridge are looking at that line ball is not very nicely delivered and again a big collision over on the far side and I think Zabke very much felt that. Again, the tap that sees Uxbridge trying to inch their way forward. Again, with it only being half hour periods, time is not on their side. But another score would certainly make the last few minutes very, very interesting to say the least. Again, the Rook, a little bit slow for the visitors, but they'll be just thankful that they've still got some possession here. Inching their way closer. Again, the ball out wide and a kick, which will invite one or two of their players to latch onto, but it's kicked away. As again, the visitors trying as they might to get themselves another score here. Had some close results in the last few weeks. 14-point defeat to Watford. As well as a two-point reverse at Thamesians. Got quite a beating at uh, Viralamians a couple of weeks ago. They have produced a good win during the course of the season when they beat Stevenage Town by 41 points to 7. So there is a bit of quality in this uh, Uxbridge side, but whatever you can say about the visitors, well, what on earth can you say about the home side? 
incredible start to the season and seven games unbeaten looking to make it eight if they can get themselves in a position to win this game they might just be taken to the end here though as Uxbridge again using the space to dart in between defenders and they do have a chance here maybe to get the ball wide do they have some numbers here well, they can't get the ball out wide but again the possession very much in their favour and are they going to dive over here well they're very close they can't quite get the numbers right to get them over the line but they're so close they're in touching distance here but the ball out on the sideline this time. It's another penalty. We'll see Uxbridge. Maybe try and work something here. Very close to an obstruction. As the referee does indeed call the obstruction. That will give UCS the chance to get the ball away. And again, you can see these scrums with I think only five players in them more akin to a rugby league scrum than what you see in rugby union there's again the visitors taking the ball out of the back of the scrum and heading towards the try line And again, the ball movement is good, and they might have a chance out wide here. Can they find enough to get them in as the game is in the closing stages here? Again, they pass the ball wide. Good long ball, although it dipped in the wind, but it is picked up. Uxbridge, again with a little kick. It's not a bad little kick, and they've regained. Are they going to get over the line? Well, I think the referee's going to bring it back for the penalty. They've had so much possession and so much ball down this end of the park in the second half. UCS really haven't been able to get away from their own line for long enough. As Uxbridge again piling the pressure on. Trying to get their way over the line to give us a grandstand finish here. You would think they're getting quite tired with the amount of tackling they're doing UCS, but it is so incredibly tenacious, but a great kick away. And it will be UCS with Asher Glim. That's a horrible ball. So far forward, it was... Very, very unfortunate. I'm not really sure how much the wind actually played a part in that. I don't think that the substitute, Ashley Glynn, will want to see that again anytime soon. As once again, Uxbridge up the middle. Great run. And again, they're in touching distance here. UCS will not be able to switch off. The game coming to a close as they may get another score here, and they will. This is going to go to a grandstand finish. Another Uxbridge try is going to bring them to within a couple of points here. Again, you get the feeling that that last ball was a bit questionable. But look at the step here. Absolutely wonderful ability. And scoring next to the posts. You get the feeling that this is going to go over the sticks, and indeed it is. 22 points to 19. With time ticking down here at the University College School playing fields. Can UCS hang on? Two second half Uxbridge tries have... Certainly made this game an awful lot closer than what it may have been with a full complement of 15 aside. 
It's just about going with form at the moment, but Uxbridge up the far side and a terrific last ditch tackle by Paljowski to stop Uxbridge from potentially going all the way again. They really are making a power play to get a very unlikely win here at Uxbridge at the death. The game not too far away from going into injury time. And thankfully for UCS, the ball is out on the far side. It's out of the back of the scrum. And the ball is... is in need of being able to be resurrected again by Paljowski as UCS not doing themselves any favours at all I wouldn't say it's a case of sticking it up the jumper and there might be a break here on the far side Zabke on the inside, brilliant ball movement, can they manage to get the try that would seal the deal well Uxbridge have just about managed to stop the play in motion now, can they move it wide here? They've got the numbers. It's Hartwell, although he's not showing an awful lot of urgency to get the play out wide. You can only imagine that was because they ran out of numbers on this near side. And I think Uxbridge have managed to come away with the ball as well, so not the scenario that UCS would have wanted. But they do have the ball back here. And again, it's out wide, but it will be bought back. Well, just as Harry Green all thought he was away, but it doesn't matter. They have hung on in the end, UCS, to record a 22-19 win. An incredible 12-a-side match.